going to talk to you this morning about JavaScript debuggers uh, and a lot of the probably unseen surface area in these tools that you will uh, get a lot of use out of eventually. So I'm, uh, I'm John K. Paul. I'll go through a lot, a lot of those things later. In case you are interested in some of the history, so you can actually go find, if you happen to go to the Smithsonian, um, you can go find an actual bug. This is a moth that was found in a really old computer called the Mark II. Can I have that? Great called the Mark II, the, the term debugging was, 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 it came around in the 1800s, but it was popularized by Admiral Grace Hopper of the Navy. She's most popular for also creating the first compilers. Uh, her team, in trying to find out what was wrong with one of their actual gigantic machines that took up the size of a football field that was using uh, hydraulic tubes and things to do computation, they found a moth in it and she told her team to keep that moth, tape it to the log, because of how funny it was that they actually found something real. Basically, this is the first reference to a meme using computers that I could find, and I was pretty, pretty happy about that. For all we know, this could have ended up with us calling this demothing. Uh, I do think debugging sounds a lot more fun of a thing to do. So, Debuggers are really complicated things. They are, if you Google for how debuggers work, you'll probably get a lot of information around GDB. So GDB is the debugger for C or C++. It, is, um, it does a lot of very fancy hacks around actually modifying what uh, assembly code gets put into registers. It does things with uh, system calls in Linux that allow the tool called ptrace to do some really magical things. Gratefully, we all typically world live in a world in JavaScript where our lives are not so complicated so as to think about individual bits of memory in registers, but as the progression of debuggers from the sort of generation of the web from 2000 onward, we've gotten a myriad different tools, including some extreme hacks. Like, for example, uh, before, when the iOS browser first came out, before they actually integrated the Safari debugger into it, there were tools that, that web developers made that were gigantic hacks that wrapped every single line of code with a synchronous AJAX call because that's the closest you could get to a real debugging experience on an iPhone in like 2008 before all of this done. So the actual uh, mechanics of debuggers are very interesting, very complicated, and gratefully things that as web developers we don't need to know every detail about. So what is happening now in the JavaScript and browser debugger ecosystem is that there is a war going on for our hearts as developers. The Firefox developer team, the, the Firefox uh, DevTools team, the Chrome DevTools team, the Microsoft DevTools team, even the Safari DevTools team, and separate independent companies have created so many tools all vying for our hearts. I feel like I am once again in sort of the throes of the browser wars, except instead of being trying to figure out if I should be using Firefox or Internet Explorer at any one given time, it's that should I be using this debugger or that debugger. In the end, right now, gratefully, that means that we are just getting new feature after new feature new potential opportunity to not have to actually manually test something or go actually get a device every day. Things are getting better, and all of this is because all of these companies are vying for our attention in their dev tools, which is such a weird thing for me to think about. This is what makes them, the, the, their target market is directly us for debuggers and for, for dev tools. So let's start off here a little bit. So how many of you remember the beautiful alert box of the year 2000? OK, so I am a nostalgia freak. If I had a thing like Justin had emoji, it would be nostalgia. These things, when I, when I see these things, I am reminded of the dear time when it was all I had. The, uh, so, so the 
web browser debugging experience started off with you had alerts. Alerts were the way to communicate the state of your page and put that into your face very vividly in a way that you might have to click OK 90 times to actually get through your application. Uh, I remember building sort of uh, systems that would alert lots of things and then be able to partially turn off alerts if you're, not, if you're not in production or if you are in production. Gratefully, we have many more things than this right now. History from there took us from the IE, pre-IE6 days to the Microsoft script editor and debugger, which in case of you, again, remember, like uh, Windows script host errors and all of the great things from Windows XP uh, up through maybe even Windows Vista, definitely down to Windows 98. The Microsoft gave us an, the, a lot of the features that we are now come to take as standard expectations for debuggers. The, they introduced a thing called the console, the availability of inspecting, looking at your actual source code instead of just alerting things, and being able to inspect variables in your debugging experience. The reason why Microsoft did this and made this sort of full featured is because at the time, in 2002, 3, they were experimenting with this newfangled thing called DHTML, which I'm very proud of actually having formally learned. Uh, also, they were getting into the uh, HTAs, the HTML applications, the intended competitor to, uh, I suppose, Flash. Uh, Macromedia's Flash at the time, and now, oddly enough, it's a very similar idea to what Service Worker can do uh, in uh, Service Worker can do on mobile devices because you can actually install things. But Microsoft gave us a much more full-featured experience, although still quite a pain to actually work with. Then came along Firebug. Now, this is where I really got involved and got really excited because this was the thing where not only could I change JavaScript and, make, and look into variables, but I can also show my designer what it would look like if everything was, was the favorite color red, or I could go in and change some backgrounds and border styles really easily. Firebug was the first all integrated tool which featured much more than just the debugger. This is how I learned, basically I learned to program on Firebug and I think a lot of people did. Being able to go in and do more than view source, but also view what happened on the network, view the console, view, what, how, view um, the, the DOM itself and be able to interact with it. And now we have modern dev tools. So right now between Chrome, Firefox, uh, Edge, and Safari, we basically have every, it is a smorgasbord of features that I can barely touch and go into actually the hundreds of features in these, these particular tools. These are now being, they're so quickly iterated upon that basically every few weeks we get new features in these tools. And many of them are looking to us to ask for what else we want. If basically, if you tweet at Paul Irish right now, you can ask for some completely off the wall feature. And chances are, if you can get people who I want it to, it will be in the dev tools in some fairly short amount of time. And I'm consistently very surprised and excited by this. So there are many different debugging paradigms when it comes to sort of software development as a whole. And we have stepped through, as, as web developers, we've stepped through many of these along the path to where we are now. So the first there's print statements. Basically what we did before with alert, we can easily, we can say, log out what the state of variables are. This is the, uh, probably the easiest to start to get used to, also the least powerful. Moving on from there is probably where we all are typically on a daily basis if you are using a debugger is line by line debugging. This is where using one of these tools, we can stop the world. We can control our environment such that it stops execution at a particular line, allows you to do fancy things like inspect variables, uh, see what their state is, be able to execute other code at that particular line. Uh, additionally, so there, there are many different kinds of debugging. Post-mortem debugging, if you happen to be in a, in a situation where, for example, if you were Netflix, and in a live situation, you don't want to stop the user from watching a movie, but you, some error has happened. What they do and what you can do is profusely log everything 
so that you don't actually stop the experience. You can just restart and say, go ahead, watch the movie. But uh, an engineer can go back through, read everything, and slowly start to piece together the past in a way that they can actually figure out what the problem was after the problem has actually happened. Uh, and then something that I do not know why is not popular. I'm going to try to pull a Justin Searles here and make this popular. But I'm a big fan of the delete stuff until it works method of debugging. I'm honest about this. Like I have so many times I have found some problem and then I've just like un hit control Z or whatever in, in, enough such that it works again. And it's very easy to pinpoint this way, or randomly delete gigantic chunks of my index JavaScript file until things happen to work. Uh, I'm also a big fan of Git uh, patch mode, so you can do this. But I, uh, before I hit a debugger, I typically try to delete lots, of, delete lots of things. I also tried to make a little acronym for this, but does not, it does not work like I really wanted to. Um, so under the hood for these different, uh, for all of these different browsers, there are JavaScript engines and there are debugging protocols. And there is a, a lot of attempt at, at consolidation for this. And I'll show some really uh, pretty interesting demos afterward. So uh, Chrome has the V8 engine, also in, in Node. The, the, the JavaScript engines here, each of them have their own, the JavaScript engines and the browser themselves have their own debugging protocol. Um, v, uh, V8 is the JavaScript engine for Chrome. SpiderMonkey and IonMonkey are the JavaScript engines for Firefox. The difference between these two are uh, SpiderMonkey is for normal, it is a JavaScript interpreter that interprets the normal code that runs in Firefox. But when code runs a lot, so when it is, needs to be optimized, it's part of the hot path of your code. Um, Firefox promotes that into its thing called IonMonkey. They have a monkey naming scheme, I suppose. There are actually other monkeys I don't remember. Uh, and so, so Firefox has these two different JavaScript runtimes inside of it and they expose the Firefox remote debugging protocol. Uh, these are both JSON protocols. Um, uh, in order to explore Edge, so how many of you use Edge on a regular basis? So I know. <clears throat> okay, cool. So Edge is actually, so Edge has some unbelievable things uh, in it and it is completely different and new and it's hard because I'm so used to the big blue E meaning the complete opposite of what I'm about to say. But um, so, so Chakra, Chakra Core it made some big waves recently in that Chakra Core was just open sourced. It, the entire JavaScript runtime, I think in the end of July, like a few weeks ago, the entire Edge JavaScript uh, runtime was open sourced. And it was actually open sourced in as a JSON protocol. So the way that Edge works, because it's, it's built using the Windows APIs, is that Edge needs COM, which is the inner process. So uh, on, my, on Microsoft stack, in order to communicate between processes, they, use, they don't use JSON or they don't use things that like potentially Linux things are used to. Um, but what, what they did is they separated out this core piece and actually used a JSON API so that you can, use, you can integrate Chakra Core into your own IDEs. You can integrate Chakra Core into your own tooling uh, because it, is, it just uses JSON. When they put it into Edge, they wrap all of that in the stuff that they need to make it work on Windows. But this is really cool because what they did for the Visual Studio debugger protocol, and this is all in demo world, so unless I work for Microsoft, I cannot actually show it to you. But what they did is they build a time traveling debugger. And what that means is that you can actually step both forward and backward using the Chakra Core debugger. So if you're normally used to a debugger, you can go forward in time and step through the future. What they can do is go step backward and they store all of the state for everything, including calls to things like random numbers and getting time. So it is a way to, so once this is actually completely released, it is a way to completely track the entire state of your runtime during development, which I think is, is really cool. Um, and I'm excited about for when all of that is, is finally released and put into Visual Studio Code. Then there is Safari, the name of the actual runtime, Nitro slash JavaScript core, and they have their own protocol. So in the end, there are four different 
debugging protocols, each of which this is where all of the feature development is and the dev tools wars are happening. So when it, Chrome, tool, Chrome dev tools will add something and then Firefox will add something that matches its API or that, that provides the same feature like a month later. And then Visual Studio will come out with something and then Chrome will say they need to do that. So it is a really uh, vivid time to be adding features to all of these tools because in the end, the money and time saved in aggregate over all of the people in this room plus all of the thousands upon thousands of other developers in this world is enormous. And I'm very excited to see that, that, that evolution. So debuggers are really, I say the word debugger and we say the word dev tools, but these are actually completely multi-tools. They are made up of the tiny little screwdriver and the tiny little knife and the corkscrew, there are dozens upon dozens of different tools that make up dev tools and debuggers. It's not just one thing, but rather a, a plethora of many things put together in the same interface. So the dev tools by, is actually much greater than the debugger. The debugger is just where your programming language runs and how you can interact with that, with that programming language. Separate from that is things like the console, where you can actually print C messages, um, things like the profiler, where you can, um, you can run your code and check and benchmark the speed of that code, be able to compare over time how long things take to run. Uh, the heap profile, I'm, I'm giving the names of those in Chrome, but they are equivalent actually in other, in other browsers. Heap profiler is for memory profiling to say, if you leave a page open for, for 10 hours, does your memory go up, does your memory go down, how does that work? Uh, the DOM debugger allows you to do things like when an attribute changes in your actual DOM, stop the JavaScript code so that you can break at a breakpoint there. There are tools for IndexedDB, Service Worker, uh, the I device, different device modes, the, the amount of different tools in developer tools, this list is, is dozens. And many, there are many more than just the JavaScript debugger itself. So now I'm gonna get to demos, including my one and only animated GIF and meme in the entire presentation that I'm pretty excited about. So I'm gonna do it again. Cool. So <clears throat> there are, if I could, if I could uh, flip, flip back on the mic. This is still on. Cool, so there are many things in console. So how many of you use anything other than console.log? Okay, not many. So console has, I'm not even going to come close to showing all of them, but Console has many things. So I listened to uh, Justin from earlier, and I decided to use the To Do app, which is great. We're actually going to be uh, continuing to be on brand. Um, and I here have an example of some code that go, goes and gets some go, go get some JSON, uh, converts that JSON, converts that response to JSON, and then fills up the backbone To Do app. I'm now going to show. So let's say I wanted to print out the first, I want to print out some items in my to-dos. I could do console.log app.todos.toJson. If I did that, I would see this representation right here, object, object, object which is, of course, what I normally see because I log something and I see it. And, but if I want to actually look into it, I have to go and dig through all of these things, all of these pieces here. The console also has something, just as a quick uh, walkthrough of some of the potential features, is console.table. Anyone ever use console.table? Cool, okay. I, so there are so many of these little hidden things. Look at that. It's so easy, we don't have to go through and dig deep into every item, but rather we can just easily see everything. Um, additionally, so we, there is console.trace, which if you run, you can see the entire stack trace. So in this case, it shows me the actual file that, I, that this line of code was executed on. 
Another good tidbit for how to make this a little bit more useful is that in, in this case, I actually have tons of code running, but it only showed one line in my stack trace. That's because in, you, when I'm using fetch, I'm making an AJAX call. That AJAX call creates a new stack when that AJAX call is completed. But in the debugger tools, both uh, in Chrome, Firefox, and otherwise, you can go into the sources panel. Click on this little thing over here called async. And then you will see that Chrome, the DevTools itself, knows how to piece together all of your stack traces so it can actually fill all the way back from your AJAX call to where the AJAX call was made and all of the asynchronous requests before that. So I find this to be a really helpful way to actually understand every piece of where my application is running code. It's as if I was writing a non-single-threaded uh, and promise-based application. Like if I was writing Java, I could debug all the way back using this kind of thing. You can also debug all the way back. Uh, so let me switch gears. OK, so there are many things in the debugger that you've probably not heard of. I would love to talk to all of you about all of the details about afterward. I actually have a few dozen more slides that I decided to not put in for the sake of time. But there's so much in here, so much in here to learn. So I want to also quickly make sure that I talk a little bit about Node. So Node has, so how many of you use Node for work? Cool, good. So Node has had some also fairly major uh, evolutions when it comes to the debugger, also very recently. Uh, before v6, which is currently still in development but is supposed to hit the long-term support release by the end of this year, um, the debugging support in Node was extremely minimal. Node is, so Node had inside of it v8, which was, is the JavaScript engine, and v8 had this this TCP debugger protocol, which allows you to do basically nothing. It allows you to do very little of what the actual Chrome DevTools could do, because what they did, what Chrome DevTools did was add all of these things on top of V8, but not actually integrate with V8. So thing, tools like Node Inspector, uh, all of the current Node debuggers are very, very difficult to make and need significant corporate sponsorship to get anywhere because of the old sort of architecture of how Node worked. But in the past, I think, three months, in uh, I think May, uh, in May, the new um, architecture in for Node, it was changed so that inside of Node, there's also this other project called V8 Inspector. V8 Inspector is something that is what used to be sitting inside of Chrome and Blink, Blink is the, the, the browser environment for Chrome, what the Chrome developers as well as developers on the Node debug tools and the Node team itself did is that they took everything out of Chrome that was necessary for debugging and put it into this third-party project called V8 Inspector and put that directly into Node for V6. What this means is that now Node, Firefox, Chrome, and Edge, uh, I think Safari not yet, but is intended to in the future, all have a feature-compatible JSON API, which allows you to do some very cool things. And Firefox is taking advantage of this immensely. Firefox is building a new debugger, and they are still in the process of building this. But they're building, the, the intention is the debugger to rule them all. They are building a debugger that can debug Chrome, it can debug Firefox, it can debug Node. Once uh, Visual Studio Code releases theirs, it will be able to debug Visual Studio Code. And the intention is, and it is a browser-based React application. So in case you do want to go and read how this works, it's actually just regular React code that's really easy for us to see and for us to understand. So I will show you that really quickly. So 
So they have built, Firefox has built a debugger that actually automatically will connect to all of the browsers that you currently have open, list all of those tabs out. So if I go to another tab like um, this conference's website, fresh here, you'll see that appears automatically for me to debug. This, I am using this in Chrome, but I could use this in Firefox or Safari or in mobile Safari, actually. You can use this anywhere. And I can debug. Here, I, you can see I am using, I am using Chrome, using the Firefox dev tools to debug Firefox, which is this weird state of odd things that I can put together. I can go back and use that to also my, my to-do application. I can see all of the code, uh, create normal debugger points like you would anywhere else. Oops, so when, when you can. Um, so you can debug Chrome from Chrome. You can debug Firefox from Chrome. You can debug Firefox from Firefox. There's this whole big matrix that you can do. Also, you can, using Node, Now, this is using Node out of the box. I created a, just a simple JavaScript file to run. The Node the V6 has added this dash dash inspect flag. What inspect does is allow you to opt into this new debugger architecture and gives you all of the typical Chrome dev tools on top of that. So once I have that, Now I'm actually debugging Node again in a regular browser using the same Firefox dev tools and the same Firefox debugger that I was just able to do Chrome and Safari. So as close to the one ring and ruling them all as we can do, Firefox is attempting to do. And all of this is thanks to the convergence of these protocols and everyone really wanting to play ball with, and play the game of what great new features can we actually do. Uh, all of this is a React application, so in case you do want to do more than docs in terms of open source, there are opportunities and fairly straightforward, easy to manage bugs in the, the new Firefox React-based debugger. So. Oh, I already had my anime, it's okay. So I have shown you just the tip of the tip of the iceberg as to what is possible in modern debuggers. There are things like emulating devices, pretending you're on the iPhone 2 from 2008. There are things like artificially throttling your, your connections to make it seem like you're on a, a 2G connection on a network in the middle of nowhere. You can do so much more than I could, I could possibly describe. But all of this is easily there for you to increase your efficiency on a regular basis. I would encourage you to dive extremely deep into what this can do. Because almost anything that you want to do and that you are currently doing manually by inspecting console.logs or by looking through your, your system logs, you can find some way in a debugger to do. From my perspective, this, just, just as the advent of the TDD workflow, like, like uh, test something and then check something, don't actually run through your entire application to be able to make things make sense for and, and map to your cor correct use cases, I feel that debuggers are getting along a similar path to don't, don't do all of that manually. You can check this so much faster. You don't necessarily need to have, uh, at least in, in development environments, all of the 19 different Android phones that you might be deploying on. You can do all of that in the dev tool. So I really like finding the ways for all of this to become more efficient and faster. Um, and so I want all of you to think about this and get out there to catch all of your, sorry, your bugs and make sure that you know that it's not just the regular Pokeball, but you have the Great Ball and the Ultra Ball out there in the developer tools environment to use. There is so much more out there and I would like all of you to investigate and then reach out to me and talk to me about this because I'm really interested in learning more about what people need and what people want debuggers and dev tools to be doing. Uh, so you can find me online. You can actually, if you, I'm on uh, John K. Paul on Twitter. Please reach out if you have any 
questions or otherwise, you can NPM install me if you want <laughs> to find any further information uh, about how to contact. Uh, so I, I run the NYC HTML5 meetup group. <laughs> if any of you happen to be in New York, I would love to have you come visit or come and speak there. I encourage anyone, first time speakers or otherwise, and I have done some remote from not New York talk. So if you are interested in being a gigantic face on Skype or Google Hangouts in New York, please feel free uh, to let me know. Uh, so I am a, a JavaScript uh, Ruby consultant and trainer. So I would love to, if there's anything I could do to help you or your teams or your businesses, please let me know. Uh, reach out to me. I'm excited to learn more. Um, and thank you so much. I appreciate it to the sponsors and the uh, organizers as well.